What's up guys? It's Barry and finally got a chance to make a video of my trailer workshop and I'll put it on up for you guys. Put a lot of time into this, uh, a couple of months actually. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of editing on this and full disclosure, I've never done any editing. I uh, <laughs> I know nothing about it, so I'm going to give it a try. I'll throw some still frames in there every once in a while and whatever other editing it needs. But yeah, give you a little bit of a tour of my workshop trailer. Uh, first things first, unlike a lot of the trailers out there, I'm not saying mine's unique, but I approached it as a workshop where I'd be spending a lot of time inside of it rather than just uh, storage and going from job to job this trailer is going to spend most of its time parked on the side of a house and I'll be working out of it or designing out of it or whatever it is I gotta do and working outside the trailer under a tent rather than bringing it to uh, different jobs and having to pack everything up all the time so I got myself a little script here so if I uh, am a little shaky or whatnot that's probably why, because uh, I'm not a movie star. <laughs> I'm just a contractor, just a guy to build stuff. So we're going to start with this cabinet here. I built um, mostly just two by fours. I had a buddy of mine cut up a steel top for me. He used 24 inch full slides. Let's see if I can back up here both top and bottom so I have a spot for all my drill bits and stuff like that and then underneath I keep some of the larger stuff mostly drop cloths down there and random crap you know we all have different needs uh, so first things first I, I want to address the elephant in the room which is the rebranding because we all know that DeWalt doesn't have a uh, a bench top drill press or a mini grinder multi grinder whatever you want to call it normally I'm not a big fan of rebranding things to make them pretend they're something they're not these are both Harbor Freight tools little bench grinder was I don't know like 80 bucks drill press was only like 150 and when I had everything in here with all the black and yellow let's face it it, it just looked terrible it took your eye right to it and you know this place it, it looks good I want it to look good I like the way it looks my choice <laughs> so I disassembled them completely and made them black and yellow uh, but you know you can see it works for me it looks good you know the DeWalt bench grinder that's a real one <laughs> uh, so moving forward a little bit here these are the new three drawers and the new rack system. And I wanted to talk about this rack system just a little bit uh, because I kind of lost my head over this. And that's when I ordered these racks, all right? I got, I got three rack systems in here. I got another one back there. I'll, I'll get to that. Um, they all came with rigid arms, all right? And they don't fold in. And years ago when they advertised these, they were supposed to fold in. And they didn't. Uh, now I know that's a whole discussion. But, see the thing is, is when I built this, there's a function to it. It's on casters, right? I have a riding mower. And I need to get my riding mower in here. And it requires, you know, four feet across and six feet deep. And this cabinet <clears throat> rolls up, and I secure it out up into the front. But I needed these arms to fold in, and they didn't. So keep that in mind if you're going to buy the rack system, that uh, the arms do not fold. You will have to buy additional arms. They're about 25 bucks a piece. Uh, there may be other ways to purchase a rack system that comes with, you know, five sets. Uh that do fold in, but I'm unaware, or at least was unaware at the time of this filming. Uh, but, you know, I'm just gonna just keep on walking down here. Uh, let's see, what I get going here? 
So this was the, the first rack, and you know, I do a lot of car audio and all, so that's why I have a wire rack up here. And let's see, something else I wanted to discuss, and I, I made a video on this, but you know, these are the same size, the three draw units and the two draw units. But for those of you who don't know, these are the little $20 organizers that DeWalt sells, and they fit right into here. You do have to take the top off of them to get them in there, but they fit great. Now, you can leave the tops on, which I have chosen to do here, because I can label everything that's in it, uh, but you can't open it completely. It goes about that far. You're going to have to just, you know, grab a handful and get the hell out. But you can take the tops right off. It's pretty easy. Like I said, I made a note video on that. So I'm just going to move around and not discuss that too much. Uh, let's see. I'm going to spin around here real quick and show you guys my router table. Now, this is another project that's probably going to require an entire like how-to video because it's pretty cool now all of the cabinets that you're gonna see in this trailer are all cobalt all right <clears throat> all I did was simply paint them and they were all either purchased at their height that they are now and left original with just paint or some of these are the old school they make a new design that doesn't have this uh, little diamond design in here but I like these better and uh, I think they look cooler and but they only have certain ones you can't get them anymore in you know various sizes so these upper cabinets here are just another one of those big tall cabinets I simply cut it down the middle and made two upper cabinets out of it because I already had those they were in my old shop I had three of them so that's how I handle these upper racks. But back to my router table here. I use the corded quarter inch DeWalt router in here, uh, trim router. And these plates here, you could buy them for like 20 bucks or less on Amazon. And uh, as you know, with a router table, you need a dust box underneath for your lift. And so what I did was simply modify the top. But again, and there is a, a dust box underneath. But that's a whole different story. And underneath here, one of the few DeWalt tools I don't have, or rather it didn't work here. This is a self-contained system. So I've got my vacuum for the bottom and the top all in one cabinet. For all of my dust needs, it's all self-contained and plugs right into the wall there. Got 110 in here, shore power right now. Uh, and the fence I purchased because as you can see, when the cabinet is in place, I don't have a whole lot of room in here. And I didn't want it sticking out too far. So I needed a uh, aluminum fence that was a little narrower than anything I would have built out of you know three quarter ply so so there we are I spent a little bit of money on that but everything else was relatively inexpensive I'd say the fence and all the t-track here probably about 200 bucks more or less uh, another 20 bucks or so for the switch the safety switch and of course uh, more expensive on the, the bits but you know hey everyone needs bits so, moving forward a little bit further, we'll keep on going here. Uh, let's see, where are we at here? Okay, let's talk about my benches. See, I gotta check my damn notes. I don't wanna talk too much either. All right, so a few things you'll notice. Let me get my bench out of the way here okay you'll see that these are all at different heights 
and that is for this little guy down here. I can take my miter box, set it on the top, and it's that same height. If for some reason I do need to do cutting or work inside the trailer, I can set up right in here, and I have a long bench <coughs> for cutting my wood. And that's why the benches are a different height. I also happen to like that height. It's very comfortable for me. I'm not a tall guy. As a matter of fact, this is a six foot high trailer. And I just barely hit my head on it. I'm 5'10". I'll just say 5'10 and a half because, you know, everybody wants to be taller when they're that size. Uh, but yeah, it's it's not at all. My, my six foot tall friends come in and they're like, dude, really? <laughs> Uh, so obviously I went with low profile lighting, two by four panels. Uh, also, if I need more room for cutting, this vise here, the speed jaw, it's not the greatest vise in the world, but it's very versatile. You hit this big ass button here and you could quickly adjust it in and out. But what I liked about it was this removable clip. This whole thing comes right off the bench and there's like a little half inch plate there and that's it so it gives me plenty of room all across the bench so that doesn't get in the way and for that reason I like this I didn't need anything super heavy duty but I didn't want a little piece of crap either that was a great compromise it came red I did paint that yellow So, if any of you guys are wondering about all my tools on the wall here, I mean, it's a trailer after all. It does have to move. I would say this wall is the only thing I have to worry about, really. Because everything in here is completely secure. And, uh, you know, if, if it's time for me to move the trailer, really all I got to do is throw all this crap in a box and that's it. You know, and I'll just throw it all back out when I'm done. All right, so something else I wanted to show off here in the trailer is I do a lot of soldering here, a lot of small work, Dremel work, and all that. And this particular bench, I built my soldering station on one side. Put it on a little slide out, because there's no other way to reach inside this thing. This was basically a freaking useless draw but on the other side is my Dremel station I like to keep things organized and I didn't need them rolling all over the damn place so this was the solution I came up with for all my Dremel accessories and I love it I can shake this thing banging around all over the place nothing's really going anywhere everything's secure and the Dremel itself is hung up here and comes under my cabinet and there's my arm so I could always just take this off and work down here on my bench I have plenty of room plenty of slack and of course I can always put more if I want to take it down but for now I'll just leave it up there so I'm gonna test my editing skills here because as I mentioned in the beginning uh, I'm not very good at editing never really done it before so uh, I did want to go over the draws a little bit because I forgot to do it earlier when I was filming and this was sort of an afterthought so just gonna show them off a little bit here kind of stuff that I keep hand tools of course I have my first aid kit and I've got my trusty fire extinguisher behind me if I should need that so tapes and adhesives uh, whoopsie my electrical draw a yeah, random kind of crap you'd find in any electricians bins and of course more Keep my Romex and boxes, handy boxes, uh, you know, all other sorts of random crap for any electrical work. Uh, the middle draw here, that's as any shop should have your catch-all draw. 
which means it just catches whatever random crap you don't have a spot for just gets thrown in there and moving down to the other side other random hand tools bits and accessories same thing keep my glue gun there some staple guns rivets small fasteners all the Craig jig and things like that adhesives are in here and other random small tools and more plumbing crap down below some of the larger stuff they don't have a spot for I also keep these drawers uh, like this is all my plumbing kit in here so you're gonna find more plumbing stuff down there I have more electrical stuff down this way uh, what do we got down here we've got uh, bits kits and random shits and down here we've got hangers hardware oh magic pixie dust nice that's a joke I picked up from someone else's channel calling things pixies and all that because basically that box has like servos and little electric motors things of that nature let's just show the drawers I think I opened this one before you know some assorted grommets and stuff again I do a lot of car stereo that's one of my hobbies so I've got my connectors a uh, fuse blocks I think this is the one I opened before but uh, these are the new my quarter inch drive socket set here that was a, a kit that they were selling real cheap fits right in there I think uh, when I bought it, it was like 80 or 90 bucks I think you can actually get them for like 60 now good set some soldering stuff switches and whatnot move over here clamps corner clamps mostly in there various types of anchors uh, I discussed that before you know labeling everything last screws machine screws same deal yeah it took forever to organize all this stuff uh, it's my cabinetry drawer when I'm installing cabinets more random crap washers uh, various screws exterior interior screws or drywall screws various sizes all right so here we go I might be saying hey where are all your tools at got a lot of hand tools but you know can't be a DeWalt guy if you don't have DeWalt tools so bam upper cabinet I like to keep all my tools neat and secured and all the bits and attachments blades all of that stuff goes right under the corresponding tool or right next to it in some way so like for instance I've got my nailers here I keep my nails right there well actually brads in this case I have all my various size brads up here and my pin nailer is a little off to the side here unfortunately I wanted to go right underneath but there was no room but I built drawers into this keep all my pins in there and some other accessories I have my router my cordless uh, trim router here and on this one I just made a little shelf just to speed access the ones I need right away but it's like that with all the tools here you know like you'll see that's my heat gun here and these are the bits for the heat gun you know my hammer drill I've got all my hammer drill bits around here I've got all my various attachments you know jigsaw jigsaw blades and it's all just like that you know sandpaper and obviously the sandpaper goes with the sander but that took a lot of work and I'm gonna do probably a how-to video on this because I get a lot of questions on these I've built about five of them all together more than that if you include all the ones I screwed up in the process uh, but let's go down here and so I get lots of questions and I will 
address them if I need to. And same here. All the tools and all the bits and blades that go with them. <coughs> Extra blades in here for the uh, planer. Various attachments. Oh, this was an interesting one while I'm here. I wanted to do the same with the blades for uh, for my grinder, but I wasn't going to have, you know, a hundred freaking bits all over the place. So this box I built a little different. You access everything from the side rather than pulling the draw out. Whatever bit I need, or blade I need rather, I can get in here. I even have uh, my masonry bits in there. <clears throat> Continuous edge type stuff. But there's all these. So if you'll notice though, because of the way it worked out, these are all my small cordless tools. Come on over and these are more of a, a medium size tool. Well, where's the big stuff? Well, that's where these come in. Let's see if I can do this. Bam. A lot of my old retired tools are in here. <laughs> they all work. Some of them have seen quite a few miles. these here to hold my uh, circular saw blades just a piece of quarter inch wood I painted up uh, those are just lag bolts and when you crank them down just you know draw yourself a hole half inch uh, or whatever length you need and as you crank them down they'll just chomp their way into the wood and lock themselves in place then I put a little bit of glue on them on the back side and uh, yeah, they're pretty good. They hold, they, they, they always work for me. They're great. All right, let me close this one up. So I'm, I'm going to flip around. Sorry about the possibly an abrupt edit there. Not sure. Just to uh, discuss the ceiling in here. Uh, any advice that I can give for anybody making a trailer is if you're going to finish your walls and your ceiling definitely do it first before you start loading in cabinets and doing all that because you really can't do it properly afterwards I ended up having to tear a lot of cabinets out of here to get this ceiling up properly and to fill any gaps that I had and also consider your lighting while you're doing that on ultimately what kind of lighting you're gonna have this is actually not my first choice. I just didn't like what I had. Originally, I was just using LED lighting. Uh, didn't like the little LED lights all over the place, the little runners. So I went and got some real legit panels, uh, 24 by 48 LEDs. Uh, and also consider air conditioning. I will be replacing this vent. Uh, this has a rain sensor on it. Uh, it's just, you know, powered by 12 volt. Um, but I will be putting an air conditioner in there and these are all standard. I believe they're 13 inch or 12.5 inch So this vent comes out and there's a big ass air conditioner just pops it right on the roof to replace that and you're in business I've already pre-run all my power. It's all up there in the ceiling just waiting for me But uh, they can get a little pricey You know figure you're gonna spend about a thousand bucks. You can get them more or less depending on your needs This is a small trailer but I just wanted to mention that as I come down here of course I've got a cabinet that's just storage basically but I've had to organize this of course I've got my painting materials on the top and on the bottom is my masonry stuff and I've got some more stuff like extra paints and uh, drywall spackle my laser 
Uh, I keep some safety gear in here too, as well as all my drywall stuff and knives. Uh, tons and tons of rollers and all that. And yes, I have some jumper cables as well. But you need storage. And of course you need your comedy relief. Gotta have it. Gotta have some half-naked girls in a man's shop or vice versa if you're a girl. And God knows what if you're one of those, you know, transgenders. But hey, gotta have your comedy. So I'm gonna roll on down here a little bit because this video is getting a little long. I've got my rolling toolbox here. And one of the things I wanted to also discuss is Etsy, all right? Uh, this is where you buy 3D printed materials uh, for your tools. For instance, all the clips that hold all these batteries up. Most of them, uh, I would prefer, if they need to be strong, that you don't buy them on Etsy or 3D printed. You want them molded so that they can actually hold some weight and that they're durable. The 3D printed ones I've had in the past have been, uh, well, they break, easy. Hit a few bumps and it's game over. But I've also had ones that are real good. Like I just had a guy make me that. Simple little clip. Bang, one-handed operation. The same guy from Etsy made me these little badges they're magnetic like I said before these are cobalt cabinets I didn't like the cobalt name on them anymore so hey I just threw that DeWalt badge on there all right so also gonna discuss this other rack real quick uh, I've had this radio a long time and I freaking love it one of the best radios they've ever made it does stack with the uh, tough system too but it's a little wonky. You might have to modify it a little bit. Uh, the totes in the back, if you don't own them, get them. I, I cannot, I cannot uh, do it justice by just giving my recommendation on these things because they have been invaluable to me on jobs. They, if, if there's a way for storage to be a moneymaker... Yeah, that's it. The The ability to just throw things in them. I mean, just random crap, whatever you want, and just go. Yeah, yeah that's invaluable for anybody in construction. But, you know, of course, I've got the old uh, rolling cart here, which I just pulled out. As you see, I made a little holder here for the vacuum and for my blower, which is now sitting on the floor. And... Um, I actually prefer to keep that on. Uh, originally, that was a last minute decision because the vacuum and the blower were just sitting on the floor all the time. Didn't have any place to put them because basically I filled up every inch of this trailer. But I bring them with me on almost every job. And this thing actually is real convenient. I could pop the handle right off, throw it in the back of my truck with all the rest of the tools and just go, <laughs> you know? So yeah, that's a pretty cool thing to have. Just another little mod that some people might find interesting. And of course, I didn't do anything too crazy up in the V-nose, up in the front. It's just, you know, more storage, various tools. I, I do have my channel 4-bay uh, charger in there, you know, a power strip for whatever I need. Um, but I did have this. It's pretty cool. You know, I like to make my life easy. So... This is on a, uh, a slide out so I can access my table saw easily without having to lift it up and move all my damn batteries out of the way because they're right there on top of it. Um, little things like that are really, you know, might not seem like much or might seem excessive, but <laughs> I use this table saw a lot <laughs> and. Uh, over time, that thing has been a real lifesaver, man. It just, you know, anything that makes your life easy is, is worth doing it. You know, as long as it's not too overly complex. Um, and again, we were, we were talking about Etsy before with some of those little badges I had made. 
of course, I saw my little DeWalt rug here. That was like 20 bucks. I, <laughs> I had to get it. It's uh, a little cheesy, but I, I freaking love the thing. Right? It's kind of soft, and to be totally honest, it's basically just there for the sake of this video because I know it's going to get ruined. It's, it's super plush, right? And super thin. And yeah, that's going to get ruined. So that's not going to stay there all the time. But hey, for the sake of the video, it looked great. Had to say, hey, look, look what I got. Looks official now. And of course, the door. Because everybody hangs stuff off their door. It's just what you do. So lastly, I'm going to come back on in here. And we're going to talk about all this fun stuff. The power. All right, so this is a 4,000 watt pure sine wave inverter. You see the brand name there, Volferth. I got this on Amazon. I don't remember the price. It wasn't too outrageous, uh, but 4,000 watts is enough for me. But one of the things I did want to mention uh, is you need to go with deep cycle batteries. You're not going to get away with just using a regular car battery. And the reason for that is when they drain down all the way, if you're not plugged into shore power and they're not charging, by the way, that's what that red box is. That's uh, a trickle charger there and a battery monitor. But if they drain down, and you guys may have heard this like a million times on the uh, DeWalt battery forums, they drain down too far, they don't want to charge back up. They, they get past a point of no return. Uh, deep cycle batteries do not do that, or at least not to that kind of an extreme. You can drop them down all the freaking way and then just throw them on the charger and revive them back to life. Now, another thing to note is that an inverter here, you know, 4,000 watts is good for me. It's probably good for most people, but there are two different types of inverters. There's this type, which is a pure sine wave, which... I recommend but it's not necessary there's also what's called a modified sine wave and the difference is to to make a short description out of it is the pure sine wave is good for electronics right you get a nice clean signal light nice clean power coming in that won't destroy your sensitive electronics now that includes anything with circuitry it could be an air conditioner, uh, a microwave, um, or anything of that nature. But they're also more expensive and not always necessary. Uh, for instance, you saw on the back I had a grinder and a drill press and a router and the you know all that stuff. You don't really need a pure sine wave for that. You know, just a regular more inexpensive inverter will work like i had a harbor freight inverter here that was 5000 watts before this uh and that thing was an absolute animal it powered everything no problem no lights blinking nothing but this one is going to be better if you're ever going to go to uh more uh sensitive electronics especially if you're going to do an air conditioner i do plan on doing an air conditioner in the future so that's why I wanted a pure sine wave. Um, this box here, that's an ATS that is to convert, uh, or rather to switch between using the inverter and battery to power up the trailer or using shore power, which is, as you know, your, your home. You're just running an extension cord out. So the extension cord goes from the outside directly into this ATS, which stands for automatic transfer switch. And if it, for some reason, gets unplugged, it will almost instantaneously switch to using the inverter and your uh, battery to power everything. And vice versa. If you plug something in, or rather you plug it into the house, it will automatically turn off the inverter and batteries and start running off shore power. Um, and of course I have both a 12 volt and a, uh, 110, you know, house power. So <clears throat> various accessories, everything from 
you know, the winch up in front or the, uh, the jack to lift this thing up. Uh, various, what do I have in here? The ceiling fan has its own breaker, so I gave it its own power switch as well. Uh, and just various other accessory switches. You know, everyone's project is different, so what works for me might not work for you. Uh, I'm sure I've done some things here that are possibly redundant. Or, you know, someone said, oh, well, you forgot to do this, or you're going to need bigger breakers or whatever. But for now, everything works exactly as I need it. And I will change it as need be in the future. But, that's pretty much it. So, in closing, I'm just going to give you another giggle. Bye.